What's up, everybody? I'm going to talk about Keepa in this video. This is going to be a beginning tutorial. I'm going to show you where to go find it and also talk about the different subscriptions that they have. Now, it is a free tool to use, and there are definitely some useful things for free, but you will want to pay for the subscription if you are a serious bookseller, because even though it's about $40 a month, it's going to save you hundreds of dollars a month if you actually know how to use it correctly. So first place to go find it is you just go over to the Chrome Web Store, or you can find the link in my description. You find or type in Keepa, and you can just add it to Chrome. And once you've done that, you now should be able to see this Keepa box that that basically pops up whenever you refresh an Amazon page that has some sort of product or some book on it. So here's the actual Keepa chart. This is crucial to your business if you actually want to make sure you're buying good books and you're buying profitable books. And you know this is this is crucial for for your business. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is break this down so that it's really simple. And the first thing that I'm going to do is actually just remove everything here. And I'm gonna start with this first point or the first data point, which is Amazon. Now this yellow line represents the new Amazon price over time, because on the X axis, the horizontal axis, you can see you have July, August, September. This is basically right now a year uh, period of data, but you can change it from basically the inception um, of this product on Amazon all the way to three months, a month, or if you want, you could even click and drag to look at a specific time period. And if you want to go back to you know what you're viewing, you can just double click to see that there. Okay, a couple of things to note about the Amazon price is that Amazon price changes throughout the year, probably due to a number of factors. It's And the reason why that's important is because you should realize that Amazon's price isn't always you know constant. It doesn't, it doesn't always stay the same. It could, but it doesn't always. Also, sometimes Amazon goes out of stock, and that's something that could be really important because a lot of books that where Keepa goes out of stock, maybe the use price goes up a little bit more and you can actually sell the book for more. Now, let's go ahead and show the, the blue line now, which is the new price for a third party. So if you're not Amazon and you're selling this book new, you would be selling it and be represented by this blue line. And that could either be a merchant seller, that's somebody who's shipping it from their own house or their own warehouse, or you could be an FBA seller who's shipping their new products into Amazon's warehouse and then Amazon's fulfilling it for them. Now, something that's crucial to note here is that the new third-party price is almost always going to be lower than the Amazon new price because Amazon, in comparison, right, Amazon or a third party, Amazon's always going to get the sell if they're the same price. So generally, these third parties need to be a little bit lower than the Amazon new price. And same thing, obviously, a third party is going to change how they or for how much they sell their product based upon you know market demand, supply, and also the repricers and things like that. Now, the most crucial piece of information, actually, that's not quite true. One of the very crucial pieces of information is this black line, which represents the use price. And the use price also changes over time based upon market availability and, and supply. But this is what you as a bookseller are going to be really basing your buys off of. Obviously, you're not going to buy books that have no value. You want to be finding books that actually have value. And one way to confirm that a book has value is to see what price that book has had over time. Now, if we take a look at this book, it looks like the lowest this book has been is around maybe $33. And it's gone maybe as high up here to, to $80 or $85. Now... The most important piece of information, and this is where the Keepa subscription comes in, which is $40 a month, totally worth it, is the sales rank. And that is this green line here. Now, sales rank is the metric that Amazon uses to determine how often or how popular an item is. So Amazon has a whole bunch of different categories. You got books, you got DVDs, you got toys, you got video games, you got a whole bunch of categories. And each category has a certain number of products in that category. And a sales rank of one indicates that that product in that category is selling faster than any other product in that category. So an item that has a really, really high sales rank then would be an item that really isn't selling very frequently in comparison to the other stuff in the category. So let's take a look at the sales rank of this textbook. So basically, whenever you see sales rank, decrease significantly that indicates a sale so here's a great example let me actually get rid of the the, the new prices just to make things simpler 
Okay, so we have the black line, which is the use price overlaid with the sales rank. So what you'll notice is that if you use your cursor, you can track the sales rank and you'll see that over time, the sales rank is going up. And that's because this book is not selling, other books in that category are selling, and as a result, this book's sales rank is increasing. Now, as soon as this book sells, all of a sudden, Amazon's saying, now this is a more popular book and we're gonna see the sales rank drop. So we go from 859,000 all the way down to 109,000. Okay, so that's indicative of a sell. And the reason why this is cool is because now we have the ability to see how frequently a book is selling, and then we can compare that or match that to the used price and the new prices to figure out, okay, what is probably the true value of this book? So I'm gonna go ahead and count the number of sales that I see here. So I'm gonna go, this is one sale, two sales, three sales, four sales, five sales, six sales, seven sales, eight, nine, and on and on. Okay, so we can see that this book is clearly selling over time because the sales rank is going up, 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 and then it's dropping back down. Now, how does Keep actually get this data? Well, every single Amazon has a product, every single product in Amazon has a product detail page. And you can see one of the metrics that is measured is the best sellers rank, which is the sales rank. And what Keepa does is keep track of all of this information on these pages and basically refreshes, I don't know, every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes, I have no idea. Their API refreshes, you know, constantly throughout the day. And therefore, because they are mapping or collecting those data points of the sales rank over time, they can just put onto a graph and this is what it looks like. And so we see that when the book doesn't sell, the sales rank goes up. And then when it does sell, the sales rank goes down. And that's what Keepa basically captures. Something you'll notice that's interesting about sales rank is that you'll notice books don't tend to always sell consistently throughout the entire year, especially textbooks. Here's a great example. You'll see uh, this U-shape in January and February and August and September. And the reason why the sales rank is in that U-shape are very, very low is because this is when there's a high demand for that book. Because if you would look, these are the semesters when kids or, or students are going back to school. And that means there's more demand for the book. There's more people buying the book. Therefore, the sales rank is going to decrease because there's more sales. And usually what you'll see as a result of that is that the price goes up. Because remember, this is basically economics 101, supply and demand. As supply goes, as, as demand goes up, supply goes down and vice versa. So we see that demand is increasing, right? As in, 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 uh, indicated by the sales rank dropping here. And as a result, we see that the used price of a book goes up. Now, the reason why that could be a crucial piece of information for your business is because you have these two times throughout the year where you can usually sell more books and also sell them for more money. So if you were maybe buying a book and you understood keep a trust and you understood that that book maybe is inflated in price during those textbook seasons, maybe you decide, hey, I'm gonna hold on to this book for another month and a half because I can probably sell it for an extra 20 to $30. So it's just something that's interesting to take a note of. Okay. The other cool pieces of information that I'll show you here include this uh, more historical data. So I've already clicked it uh, to show this more historical data here. And if you don't see it, you'll see this less historical data. Or if you don't see this, this box here, you can just click the more historical data and you'll see this. The reason why this is important is not really for the review count or the collectible offer count. Um, it's useful for the new and the used offer count. Okay, and the reason why that's useful is because, again, you'll see similarities and you'll see relationships between the price of the books and also how frequently the sales rank is dropping with the number of used offers. And so what you can see here is like during this textbook season, the number of used offers goes down because more people are buying the book and the sales rank is going down. By used offer count, we just simply mean how many, how many Amazon sellers are there? How many people are selling this book, whether that be merchant fulfilled, whether that be Amazon FBA fulfilled? Okay. Now, what else can I show you? I also forgot to show you this collectible, this uh, gray line. There are some books, usually not textbooks, that might be more rare, that might be more collectible. And there's also a line that can show you, okay, here's what the collectible prices were over time. Now, this book doesn't have it, but many, many books do have it. Okay, let's go and take a look at another book. This is Welding Inspection Technology. One thing you'll notice is that you don't see the yellow Amazon button. And if you don't see that on a Kiba chart, it means Amazon has not historically ever sold this book new. And so the only new copies would come from a third party seller. And you can see that the new price right now is about 104.35. And that's this person here. Okay. Now, 
let's go ahead and take a look at um, the difference between what we just looked at in this graph versus this graph here. Now, the obvious thing to note is that this book here doesn't seem to have a normal textbook season sort of pattern. In that case, if you were to buy this book and you were thinking of selling it, you probably wouldn't be holding it for textbook season because you realize that its data has showed it's not really a textbook season book, so you can just sell it whenever you want throughout the year. Okay, uh, let's go and take a look at another book. So this is a learning American Sign Language book. If you ever find this book, then pick it up. All right, you'll see that this book sells year round very well, but it still does have that textbook U-shaped pattern. But basically any time throughout the year, this book is selling multiple times a day. And if I click on the day button, you can see the sales rank decrease there. That was a sale. So it's this book is selling probably every single day, maybe even a couple times a day. And when it comes to textbook season, probably five to 10 times a day at least. Okay, last thing I wanna show you before I wrap this up is show you a book that actually has a sales rank that's really, really high. and would be um, indicative of maybe some a book that you wouldn't want to buy or maybe that you should give more thought into. So I told you about sales rank. The lower the sales rank, the closer you get to one, the better. And as you do this more often, you look at keep a charts, you'll get an understanding of like, okay, what sales ranks are, you know, what, what sales rank does a book need to have for me to consider buying it? And the reason why it is tricky is because sales rank is really just a snapshot in time. Because if I were to look at this book at this point in time where its rank is 8 million and I was out scanning it or I was look, taking a look at it, I would say that book probably has never even sold this year. But if I were to have scanned it on this day when the sales rank was 441,000, my perception of this book might be different. I'm thinking, oh, wow, this book has a 400,000 rank. It probably is selling somewhat frequently. So that's one thing to note about sales rank is that it really is just a snapshot in time. And when you do go to those books that sell less frequently, and when you take a look at the ranks, you still might want to go to the keep a charts to take a look. Just because a book has a high sales rank, a million, two million, three million, doesn't mean it doesn't sell. Just means you might be you might have scanned it at a time where it hasn't sold in the recent past. But if you look at the keep a chart, maybe it has sold five or ten times throughout the year. Okay. By looking at this book, we can clearly tell that it's only sold one time throughout this last year. So if you're looking out there for this book and you're scanning scanning for it and you see the sales rank of of, eight, of 7 million, you'd probably, most people probably wouldn't even look it up on Keepa because they would just say, has a really high sales rank, it's not selling. And that's basically, I mean, it basically is true. It sold one time. But if this book was a dollar, I personally would still buy it because for me, a dollar is worth the risk of maybe being, being able to sell it for $85, which is probably what this book sold for at that time. Now, a lot of people disagree with that, and that's completely fine. If we look at the history in the past, right, you can see that it sold a couple of times in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2019. But in you know in the last couple of years, it only sold one time. So for, for me, if this was a dollar, I'd probably take a chance on it. I might not send it in Amazon FBA though, because you know I wouldn't want to incur long term storage fees, but I might take a risk on it. But I would say no way would I spend five dollars or ten dollars on this because it simply just really isn't selling much. All right, the last thing I want to tell you before we go is about that Keepa subscription. About It's about $40 a month. It's completely worth it because having the ability to look at the sales rank over time is going to help you determine whether or not you should buy the book or not. And if you're buying hundreds of books or thousands of books throughout the year, each individual decision could be the difference between buying a bad book or buying a good book. So in my opinion, it is absolutely necessary. You cannot do this business without it. And just to show you what you would see if you have the free versions is you would see this. You would see you know, the used price and the new prices. And that is helpful information because you at least know what this book is listed for over time. But you have no idea if it's actually selling. You have no idea if the actual keep a chart looks like this and it's only sold one time. Or you have no idea if it looks like this and it sells all the time. So the point is, this is a, a tool that's crucial for your success. Again, this was just a uh, beginner video on Keepa. I'm going to come up with or come out with some intermediate and more advanced guys at Keepa because there are definitely some cooler things that you can do um, beyond just these basic fundamentals. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.